Hello, thank you for having me. Um, it's great to be among this, this awesome group uh, who study things across the globe and across the, the galaxy. Um, and I'm just a guy who goose off with robots. Um, I, I wish, I, I, wish I, I had that kind of impact. Um, but that said, I'm amped to be here to tell you about, about robots. Um, and and in, in particular, uh, my claim is, is that, uh, that the impact of robotics over the next 40 years is going to look a lot like the impact of, of computing and network technology over the past 40 years. If you think about the personal computing revolution, the internet superhighway, and how that's changed our relationship with information, how it's made us more productive and be able to do more things with information and connect with each other and essentially reach out and touch someone in, in ways that we never thought possible. Um, our job as roboticists is to take this out of the lab take it beyond the digital world, and essentially have us be able to reach out and change the world. This is an extension of all these things to the physical world. Um, and so just to give an example, uh, this is me, so a little bit about my background. Those are my parents uh, back in the 70s. And, uh, and back then, you had to use long distance telephone to stay in touch with people across the nation and across the world. Uh, I don't think they could have imagined that I'd be speaking to their grandkids over a transatlantic line having a video conversation. We didn't imagine those things to be possible 40 years ago. And that just gives you a sense of where robotics is going to go in the next 40 years. And to get a, a quick glimpse at this, I just want to show the suitable technologies beam remote presence device. Uh, that's Tom uh, in my lab. And while I'm on sabbatical in, uh, in California, I'm able to stay connected. I'm able to move around the hallways. It's, it's sort of like Skype on wheels, although they don't want me to tell you that. Um, <laughs> um, but I can have those hallway conversations. Uh, and on the off day where it's, uh, where it's nice in Providence and not nice in, in Menlo Park, California, I can go around and enjoy those days and, and look at them. So basically, this is how the interface works. You know, I can see out. They, you know, people on the device can see me. Um, and so I can access this, this system from anywhere around the world. Uh, this morning, I was like, all right, I just want to go check in in the lab. So I, I beamed into this system and essentially drove around my lab. Uh, and so I don't even, like Skype, I have, somebody has to be there. I can just do this uh, myself. Uh, in addition, to not being reliant upon somebody to just be there uh, to take the call, uh, I can also affect physical change in the world, literally change the world. Um, Tom, Tom was complaining that, I, that I'm constantly moving chairs around in the, in the, in the lab. Um, so, uh, so there we go. And so the beam is just one example of robots, of just a, an emerging swell of robots that are gonna, that are, they're gonna come in, into your life and ch help change the world. This is the NASA Robonaut 2. It's currently on the International Space Station to help take advantage of their limited time and space. The next one is the Parrot AR drone, $300 you can buy one of these robots. Uh, and we just hooked it up to a Nintendo Wiimote and started flying around, it's great. Uh, there's the iRobot PackBot that we've done some work with. It does field robotics. Uh, so this system was actually sent out uh, when there was the Fukushima disaster to help do reconnaissance and surveys of areas that might be contaminated. Just on a random way up to San Francisco for a meeting, I just happened to catch a glimpse of the Google self-driving car. I just think that's awesome. That's, that's really cool. And then we also have cute little humanoid robots that, uh, that essentially uh, entertain visitors to my lab. Um, and these systems are great, uh, but right now what we face is that, is that in order for you to, have, to interface with this technology, uh, there's a barrier. So to get it to the devices and the operating systems that you, wanna, that you want to, to have, uh, this technology is, is still sort of far away. It's still, there's still a lot of software and technical overhead. Also, it, it, there's limited access for people that might be disabled or access across the socioeconomic spectrum. And so the way that we want to get past this barrier is by creating essentially the World Wide Web of robots. So use web technologies to make all of these things that are going on great work in, in companies and labs across the world accessible to everybody. Uh, the reason we want to do this is because, uh, is because we would like to have robots. We know that robots are going to have an impact on society. And it's not just going to be Skynet and Terminator. Uh, that's what people usually say. Those are not coming. Uh, actually, we are going to be the ones that, sh that, that decide how robots are going to be behave in society. And there's lots of questions that have to be answered outside of, are robots going to take over the world? Um, and so these are, just, these are just a few. Like I just sort of randomly said, uh, what are we talking about in, in, robot in robotics? And so these come up. This just a small sampling, right? Um, and so there are really two questions that you have to ask yourself uh, when, when it comes to robots in society. Uh, productivity, how can we do more? And quality of life, uh, how can this technology essentially improve everybody's life across the world and across, uh, across the socioeconomic spectrum? 
Um, and so in doing this, what we're trying to do is, is build the World Wide Web of Robots to put into your hands the ability to use this technology, think about the things that we're not thinking about, the mechanical engineers, the computer scientists, the electrical engineers are not thinking about right now, such that we can essentially build a robot app store that's actually going to have a real impact, that's going to address the needs. And so in order to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, we're going to make robots more personal. One experience that I've had that I just thought was one of the most awesome projects that I'd worked on in my entire career is working with Henry Evans. Uh, Henry suffered a stroke about 10 years ago and was now quadriplegic and unable to speak and re relies on assistance to do the basic things in his daily life. He has control of his, uh, of his head, so he can do gaze control, and so he can use things like a letter board in order to communicate and have conversations, such as right here. R, O, C, B, robot. Um, he can also use gaze control to essentially use a computer. So he uses gaze control to direct the, the location of a cursor on a screen. Uh, he has limited ability to, to use his thumb, so he uses his thumb as a, 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 to press a button to do mouse clicks. And so when Henry saw that we actually have this AR drone technology, he could fly drones around through a web interface, he said, we got to try it. And I said, I want you to try it. And, uh, and that's what we did. So we created a web interface that he could use. Uh, so that's the AR drone. It has a frontward facing camera. The video feed from this camera we, we put into the web interface so he gets a live video feed. And we also made nice big buttons that he could use for controlling the system. And, uh, and so here's our first flight. That drone is actually going to move really fast. So, so you got to pay attention. Uh, but here it goes. So I don't know how to top this. I don't know how to beat a mute quadriplegic being able to fly around his house and be able to do things like check out his garden and explore and, and look at his solar panels, maybe even someday, you know, chase his dog around. Um, I don't know what could top, do you know what top, I don't know what could top that. That's, uh, that's just amazing. Um, and so, uh, so, so Henry was, is actually, is actually better than, than me or anybody else being able to fly this, this drone around. He is so much more aggressive in terms of checking out his garden, uh, doing all sorts of stuff. It, it was amazing. Um, and so right after this, after he checked out his garden, he went to, uh, he went to go do a, he went to land uh, his solar panel, uh, to check out his solar panels. He had a nice landing there. And then, uh, and then, and then this happened. <laughs> Uh, and so, uh, so, you know, so after that, Henry basically said uh, that he needs to practice. Uh, <laughs> but he also said that we need a better, we need a better interface. And so we did, a, we did a little bit more flying after that. He was able to check out a ravine. Uh, he was able to explore his front yard. But there are people that are actually working on making better interfaces that Henry can use. So this is a video from the Robots for Humanity project, um, where, uh, where they're using the same web technology that we've developed at Brown in order to let Henry do basic things that, that he'd like to do, like be able to, um, to scratch an itch when he gets one, to be able to consume a meal on his own, uh, to be able to, uh, to shave. And so you'll, I, you'll see just right after this uh, the first time that, uh, that Henry was able to shave himself in 10 years, and we'll get to that. I'm a little bit ahead of myself. I'm amped. Um, uh, so that's, that's, that's amazing stuff. And we'd like to, and by giving this technology to people, such as Charlie, you see Charlie right there. That, was, that look that he has is the same look I had on my face when I saw this video. Um, <laughs> Charlie's not going to forgive me for that one. Uh, <laughs> um, and so, uh, and so the, the robot that he was using is the, is the Willow Garage uh, PR2. Um, so you see it, it's a safe platform. It's a spring-driven system, so it's safe. That's Wesley, my son. Uh, he's he's a, able to use the system, it's powered on. Uh, it also can, can do more autonomous things. So we have a laser range sensor, which senses depth. So near, far, wherever you are, it will be able to sense, uh, it will be able to sense depth. Um, and so we can use these to essentially build, uh, build maps. Uh, so this is us driving, we have a, a web interface for us to do what's called simultaneous localization and mapping. That is, the robot can see open space in front of it, and as it moves around, it stitches that space together in order to create a, a floor plan, uh, estimate the, the floor plan of a building or any sort of physical space. If you drive this robot around long enough, around Willow Garage, you'll get a map that looks something like this, which is a, a very good resemblance to the actual architectural floor plan. 
But if you look at that map, it, it doesn't look very inviting. It's like, what is all this stuff? It doesn't make any sense. And so we're working on tools to essentially annotate uh, these systems, to mark up the systems the same way that, that the web allows us to mark up documents and share them. We are marking up the physical world so we can share access. And once we do that, we have a common representation with the robot to then send it to have it do autonomous things. Like if we annotate the location of the bike rack and we can tell the robot to go there and it can autonomously navigate using this map. And so this is just some of the things that we believe are going to make uh, the, world, the World Wide Web of robots more personal so you can use them. Robots that sit in our, in our labs are, are not, not good enough, and so we need these systems to actually go, go global, to be accessible worldwide. And the impact of this uh, became apparent to me uh, around the, the birth of my third child. I was holding my daughter, Violet, but while I'm doing that, I can never put work down. So, I, so I'm looking at a video feed from Palo Alto, California, and I'm essentially looking at my postdocs, Trevor, Sarah, and this can of shaving cream. We have video in browsers all the time, but what I'm going to do is pick that, that shaving cream up with a robot. I'm going to use that web page to drive a robot to pick up that can of shaving cream. So here's our, here's our first run at that. Um, uh, so this is, this is really good. <clears throat> Thank you. Sorry about that. All right. Thank you. Um, um, and, so, uh, and so basically we're able to, uh, to, to pick up this can of shaving cream. I was able to do it 3,000 miles away, uh, no problem. Um, we crowdsource robots. 276 people across the world were able to drive a little vacuum cleaner robot on our maze in Providence, just being on for, online for five days. Uh, the last thing I will say is that we want our worldwide robots to be open. It can't be proprietary. It can't be locked up in one single application. It has to be open. It has, it's more about community than just software or systems. Um, and so to do this, we've, uh, we've created the Robot Web Tools Working Group. We have all of our software online, uh, open source, and play things like GitHub. GitHub is social coding. It's great. We also have a growing community of people across the globe. So, uh, so the OTL Maker blog has a number of great homebrew robots. Vecna Technologies uses our, our, our work to, uh, to, um, to essentially help deliver medicines in hospitals autonomously with these systems. Uh, Eugen Robotics is using our systems to, are using our, our systems to, uh, to essentially have robots in, in deliver sandwiches in cafes. Uh, our collaborators at Willow Garage, Bosch, uh, contributions from ETH and Zurich. Uh, these are all great things. Um, but what I want to leave you with is that these robots, as I, as I tell my kids often, uh, they're, they're going to be a part of our lives, right? This technology is coming. It's powerful. But it's not the technology. It's not the computer scientists or the electrical engineers or the mechanical engineers that are going to find it. It's you who are, who are creating the applications. Who are, we are providing the technology so that you can help us reach out and change the world. Thank you. Thank you.